I actually really I'm impressed by the amount of people uh, in the dance community in Russia. It's huge. There's so many dancers. So much. Like I, it's yeah. It's amazing that dance is really something that uh, they love here. So I love that. Of course, they're very hungry. They're very uh, you know they show up. Clearly, <laughs> I think Moscow. <laughs> Moscow has definitely uh, the most. Uh, I mean, I had many dancers in class the most but i personally i personally uh prefer uh saint petersburg just it's i mean no shade i like both but uh my favorite to teach in russia it's saint petersburg i just i like that the studio where i teach in saint petersburg looks very old and it just has a flair and style to it so i like that it makes me it does something to me. Um, Moscow has a lot, a lot of people, so you have to do it in gymnast, but um, it's very different, you know. When, when there's a lot of people, it's more like, a, you know, it's, it's, it's harder for me. It's fun, but it's, it's harder. In St. Petersburg, it's like, what, I don't know, 100 people? Still a lot of people, but it's in a studio, so it feels a little bit more intimate, and I, I like it better. Uh, well, I teach, I offer a uh, street jazz class in sneakers um, simply because a lot of dancers are afraid to put the heels and the boys too. Um, and then I teach my, my uh, famous heels class, uh, which I prefer. Um, I don't know, it's very different. I don't think one is better than the other. You know, street jazz is street jazz and sneakers. Uh, and uh, heels is, is, is more sexy, and heels is, and heels is harder, for, sh for, for sure. Well, I've always been obsessed with uh, high heel shoes, or even when I was a kid, I was obsessed with point shoes, you know? I was in a ballet school, and I was always obsessed. I was mad that I couldn't have point. Boys has to be in flat, so even then I wasn't happy. <laughs> um, my mom had a lot of heels, a lot. So I think it's a big part of it. Like I grew up with a mom that had like more than 300 pairs and that would go shopping for heels all the time. So it's definitely something that I saw my whole life, heels. It's not just the shoe and what, you know, it's what it represents. So I think I started dancing in heels because of of what it represents, you know, I'm a very rebel type of person. The fact that um, I wasn't supposed to, and the fact that boys are not allowed to, to act like that, uh, is a big part of why I chose to do it. Well, at first, there wasn't that many uh, boys that would dance in heels. Uh, I mean, I'm not the first guy that danced in heels, for sure. Uh, there was Jante before me and uh, many others that I probably don't even know, that Jante probably doesn't even know, uh, you know. It's 2020, who knows who started in heels? I don't think anybody knows, you know? Uh, it wasn't me. Um, definitely a lot of people danced in heels before me, I'm sure. Um, what I did though, and I, I stick with that, uh, I made it very popular. I made it very okay to do it. I made it a trend. Since back in the days, it wasn't a trend for men to dance in heels. There were only a few that did it, like Jante or Ramon, or you know, um, then I, I started doing it, but I did it on a family TV show at 8 p.m., you know, um, on Britain's Got Talent, which is a family show watched by millions of people. And, uh, and yeah, I was dancing with my heels to Donna Summer, to, you know, <laughs> to the Spice Girls. So I think that plus my YouTube channel that, that had a lot of viral video back in the days uh, made it very popular and made it very okay for other boys all around the world to dance in heels. So I'm very proud of that and you're welcome. Um, but yeah, I mean, now, now I see a lot of boys in heels. Not so much in Russia. It will change. Minds, people will change. You'll see. But uh, I was in Brazil last week and my class had more men in heels than girls. So it really depends on the country 
I'm, I am uh, teaching at. And uh, yeah, this is the thing. Uh, I'm, I'm gay, but I am not gay because I don't like women. I'm gay because I like women too much. I know it's funny, but it's true. So um, I respect the girl, the woman so much that I think that's why I'm gay. <laughs> I just don't see them in that, that way. I love to see a woman being sexy, being sensual, being comfortable in her skin, no matter how, how she looks like. I love a woman or a boy, anybody. I love to see anyone that are comfortable in their skin. And, and again, it doesn't mean that you, you feel pretty. I don't necessarily feel pretty as a person at all. But that's why I love dance, because when I dance, I do. I feel good about myself, I feel pretty. I love to express myself like that, you know what I mean? That being said, I think, that's only my opinion, that now, this new generation is mistaken the art of heels. So back in the days, there were only a few people that were teaching heels. Uh, Aisha Francis, Danielle Polenko, um, Jante, Ramon, you know, there were only a few people that, would, that was teaching heels. I came a little bit after that, not too long after, but I came a little bit after that. And we were teaching how to dance in heels. It was an art. Do you know what I mean? It, it was like another style, as hard as ballet or jazz or hip hop. And I loved now, today, I think heels is going in a new direction that I'm not 100% uh, supportive of. I think heels now is just very sexual. It's all about sex and, and sex and sex and sex. I like sex, don't get me wrong. I like to be sexy, I like to look sexy, I like to, you know, I like, I like it, but I also, I don't think it should, be, it should be the only thing, you know? Because a lot of young dancers now, especially women, think, oh, it's heels class, so I'm just gonna be on the floor and touch the floor and touch myself and dress very, you know, almost naked. I'm not comfortable with that. When I see that, it actually doesn't appeal to me. I don't find it hot. I don't find it sexy. I find it rude. But that's just my opinion. So I like a nice mix of sexy, provocative, but also refined technique quality. That's what I stand for. And I think in my dance, it's what I bring to the table. I think I bring quality first. Lines, technique, knowledge, and then sexy. So yeah. My first heels, um, I, I think it was cheap because I, hadn't, I didn't have a lot of money. So um, I wasn't Louboutins for sure. <laughs> I don't know, it was something very cheap from like a, I don't know, H&M or something like that. It must have been a 10, 10 euro pair of heels back in the days. Well, heels are not comfortable, first of all, never. Whether it's Louboutins or H&M, it's not comfortable. And it shouldn't be comfortable, it should look hot. <laughs> uh, yeah, now I, I have a lot of fancy heels. I have a lot of Brian Atwoods, which, who's a friend that I love dearly. Uh, he gives me a lot of nice shoes. And I, I have a lot of Louboutins, a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of designer shoes. Um, but I don't necessarily wear them to class because I, I fuck them up, so I have to wear shoes that I can dance, you know, I dance with my heels a lot, so, it, it, you know, those are expensive heels designers, so I can't really dance with them that much because it would just, you know, it would just ruin them every class. Dance is about body language, so if you are a good dancer, yeah, I can definitely read something and I can feel some type of messages in your dance. 
if you are a good dancer. And you don't necessarily need to express with your face that much. Just, yeah. I think that when I dance, um, I express a lot of things. I mean, I hope. I think dance is like speaking, so I think nobody created a word. You didn't create the word love or, you know, it's the phrase, it's how you put them together that matters. I think it's the same with dance, it's how you use whatever moves you want to use, what you do with them. I strongly think that dance should be something that you should pass to people, that you should share. If not, then you shouldn't teach. I'm a dance teacher and I don't get upset when I see, uh, and I do see it, when I see, uh, you know, online a lot of people doing my choreography or doing the same eight count or, or doing the same moves. I don't get offended because, because they've paid to learn that, so it kind of is their own. Now, you know, it's best if they try to do it and be themselves, but you know, I don't get offended. I think, I think it's something that we should share. Nobody should own a step. Well, when nobody's watching, I don't dance. No. No. I like to dance when people are watching. That's the difference between me and people. <laughs> I like a camera. I like people watching me dance. I like attention. That's why I dance. I dance for people to watch me dance. When I was younger, when I was a kid, yes, I would dance everywhere, anywhere, all the time. I would even dance in my dreams when I was a kid. I promise, it's true. Um, but it was because I didn't talk as much as now. It was because when I was younger, there were a lot of things I couldn't say, a lot. Uh, some fun stuff, some not so fun stuff. And so dance was really my way of, of screaming or talking or expressing myself. Now I say whatever the fuck I want to, whatever to whoever the fuck I want to. So, you know, and now I dance so much, so much, too much, that to be honest, if I don't have to dance, I probably won't dance. <laughs> I probably will be in some island by the beach, just sipping Cosmos. I grew up watching so many movie, dance movies. Uh, I'm trying to think what's the one that I really like watched the most as a kid. I think Chorus Line, because I was very young. It, it came out before I was born. So, and my mom was a dance teacher, you have to understand that. So I think, yeah, I grew up watching Chorus Line a lot and I really liked it. I, I love jazz, so Chorus Line. But then, uh, then uh, when I got a little bit older, Dirty Dancing came out, and I love Dirty Dancing because they had that so, <laughs> Patrick Swayze and uh, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I used to watch Fame. I love Debbie Allen. Uh, I used to watch what's that fucking movie? She's a maniac, maniac. Flashdance. I used to watch Flashdance with the shower moment. So many good uh, movies back then. Now, yeah, not so much. It's not a dance movie. Hustlers is not a dance movie. I love Hustlers. I went to see it in the movies and I thought it was hilarious. I love that it was uh, inspired by a true story. I love the idea of the story. I, I, I love Jennifer Lopez in that movie. What the fuck, 50? I love Hustlers like I love Street Tees with Demi Moore. Uh, I think I love Hustler better, to be honest, because it's a true story. Um, but I love the Demi Moore version because of uh, Annie Lennox, the songs. Anyway, I'm losing myself. But that's not a dance movie. That's not what I call a dance movie, no. Any Madonna song I, I hear, I want to dance. If I'm in a club, if I don't dance when I'm in a club at all. I, I drink, I'm at the bar. I drink, I drink, and maybe some other things. But uh, if you want me to dance, any 80s songs, like a George Michael, a Madonna, Prince, Old Janet, 
even old Britney, whatever. Any 80s or early 2000, you know, probably will make me dance. And probably nothing from this new generation will make me dance. High heels are not comfortable. This is a lie, it's a myth. If your high heels are comfortable, change them because you don't look good in them. <laughs> so you have to suffer, suffer, honey, if you wanna look good. Look, I have those Brian Atwood shoes. Uh, they're called Fuck Me Pumps. Love them. They're this high, bitch, like, I can't even do it with my fingers. They're like this. When I wear them, I suffer. But I look hot. So, I love them. A bath. I, <laughs> I'm the queen of baths. Everybody knows I've been doing baths my whole life. It's not something new. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to literally ask for baths. With, I've never taken a bath without bubbles in my whole life. If there's no bubbles, I don't need it. Uh, <laughs> I've always taken bath when I was a kid. I used to put the music out loud in the, I used to bring the stereo, because it was back in the days, you know, they were not like easy like now. I used to bring the whole stereo, plug it in the bath. My mom was scared that I would be electrocuted. Yeah, and I was like, no! And I used to put Mariah Carey so loud and I used to be in the bath already and I would stay 30 minutes. So this is something I've always been doing. Um, yeah, baths, it's, it's, you know, I work so much. Um, my body hurts a lot. And uh, in general, I love to be in the water. I love to be in the beach. I love to be in a bath. I love to be in a pool. I'm a, I'm a water person, not so much uh, mountains and all that shit. I don't hike, honey. Does it, do, yes, honey, no. But the idea of vacation for me is water. I have before. <laughs> um, well, I'll give you the best example. I don't know if you remember Madonna falling with the cape. That was a hard fall. Like, that was not a joke. That was, I, I don't know, have you seen it? That was a real fall. Live TV, she was already 50 something. She stood up, she kept on singing, she kept on going. So if Madonna does it, I mean, who are you to stay on the floor and cry? Get up, continue. So yeah, I'm inspired by Madonna in every way. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've fallen many times. Uh, hopefully, I won't do it in a live show or something that's important. I haven't, I haven't yet. Uh, but I have some friend of mine that did. Uh, yeah, it happens, it happens. One time I was in this club, I was performing in this club. And <laughs> this is hilarious. And, um, we were dancing in a very, you know, like in a club, in a very small stage. It was with me, uh, Arnaud and Mehdi, my two uh, dancers that used to dance with me back in the days. And we were dancing in the club, and I won't say who it was, but... <laughs> so we were amazing, and as soon as they turned off the light, <laughs> one of them fell hard, like head first, <laughs> down the stairs. And I was like, oh, bitch. <laughs> so, I mean, it happens, but I was just so happy that it was uh, dark <laughs> because, yeah. For me, it's different. You have to understand, I teach. So, it's my job. It's not like, you know, it's like everybody, sometimes I don't want to go to work. Sometimes I don't want to dance. Sometimes I don't want to teach. Sometimes I don't want to take a flight. Not sometimes. Uh, you know what I mean? So for me, it's a job now. I do it, well, because it's my job. So that's how I get my money. Uh, I do it because it makes other people happy. Uh, it makes me happy too, most of the time. I mean, it shouldn't even be a question. If you love dance, you should you should be motivated to go to a dance class. It shouldn't even be a question, you know what I mean? If you truly love dance, you should go to class, you should get better. And if you are good, you should get better because you want to stay relevant. 
because as we all know, music, dance, technology, it keeps evolving. So it doesn't mean that you're amazing today that you will still be in 10 years if you stop. So I always tell my dancers, even the most amazing one, keep training bitches because, because in 10 years you might not be relevant anymore because you stopped, you know? And I do the same, I, I, I do the same for everything, you know? And it's hard, it's annoying, it's hard, but that's just how society works. Nothing stays the same, which it's, I guess it's a good thing, I don't know. I think it's nice to have a talent <laughs> because it's something you can't really teach. Uh, that being said, I hate lazy people. I've seen in my career a lot of dancers that I wouldn't have bet a dime on them. I was like, oh, but you're not good, you're not gonna go anywhere. And so many times I've been surprised by those people because they have come a long way. They are amazing now and they are working dancers. And they've shut my mouth. I was like, oh. Because they worked harder than the people that were next to them that were looking good but stopped working. So it's what I said before, it's the same. So, but I do, I mean, I don't know, I, don't, I wouldn't pick one over another one. I wouldn't say practice over talent. No, bitch, I would say both. So usually, because of social media and because I'm popular on social media, I, would, I will have not just only professional dancers in my class, I will have a lot of different people, including a lot of beginners. I don't mind it. I don't mind them at all. Everybody is welcome in my class. That being said, my priority is the people that wants to be dancers, professional dancers. They are my priority when I'm in class. Um, unless I teach a beginner class and it's specified, which is not the case yet. So they are all welcome to come as long as they understand that what I do is hard and that they're gonna struggle. If they're okay with struggling, they're welcome. But I will always, uh, yeah, focus on the people that wants to make it as dancers. So yeah, but some cities like, you know, LA, New York, I teach harder and I'm harder, I'm tougher because those cities are known for, you know, the dance industry. So I expect people to be good, not good. I expect people to be amazing in cities like LA or New York because if you're not, then what the fuck are you doing here? I traveled so much this week. I had a minimum of sleep, not even, not even more than five hours a night, some of the nights, sometimes less. Uh, I've lost a friend recently. Uh, I've had no days off and I've had rooms filled with dancers, cameras on me, photos. So I try to smile because that's, you know, respect because people come and pay but I don't necessarily want to smile. I'm not necessarily in a good mood, but I do it because that's part of the job. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's not that I'm being hypocrite. I just, you know, it's part of the job. You try to leave as much as you can your problem homes, come and work, and then go home and be sad again if you want to. You know what I mean? So is it easy? No, it's not, but it's, it is what it is. I don't think working in an office, waking up at 6 a.m. is easy either. You know, I think, I still, I'm still one of the lucky ones. Like I get to do the fuck I want. I'm the boss. I do, I dance to whatever I want. I, I do whatever I want. So I'm lucky enough for that. You know what I mean? And I get to travel around the world and I get to still have sold out class 10 years later. Like I'm still in the game. You know what I mean? When I've seen people come and go so fast. So all that, I don't take it for granted. Like it's because of that, I can't not show up, not smile, and not dance to my full, not to the fullest, but I try. You know what I mean? That's all the reason why, but it's not easy, no. People don't see it, they only see you teach a class, and they think, oh, his job is easy, the class is one hour and a half, no. My job starts when I have to go to the airport, then I cheat. Then I have to take pictures with everyone. Then I do interviews, hi. Then I go home. Then, you know what I mean? It's not just one hour and a half class. And then I take another flight. 
and another fight, and another. <laughs> wow! I have so many people that I love. Um, I, if I go back in the days, my, my first ever crush, like love, was uh, Salim, that's his name. So he was a Madonna dancer, a dancer for Madonna on the Blonde Ambition tour, uh, the Truth, uh, Truth of uh, Dare um, DVD. Well, to be honest, I was a fan of every dancer in that tour because that's the first thing I've ever saw. Before dance movies, that's the first movie I saw that I said, I want to do this. It was the Madonna uh, True For There, so, which is why I love Madonna. So I think uh, Slam, Salim is the first crush. Uh, then uh, so many people, I'm inspired by so many people. I love, I love Brian Friedman. I grew up watching him uh, with Britney. Uh, I love, you know, so many people. Then I love Bobby Newberry, I love Miguel, I love, I love the artistry of Danielle Polenko and Aisha Francis. Uh, I love Jante, I love so many people. I love so many ballerinas, uh, my, my ballet teachers, my jazz teachers growing up. So many people. I would, I would not be who I am without all those people I just named and so many others. Uh, like they wouldn't be who they are with their inspirations. That's, you know, that's a fact. Like I said, it's something to share. So, yeah. I love ballet. I don't like. I love ballet. I haven't been... It's funny because last time I asked myself, when's the last time I went to a ballet class? And I realized it's been 15 years. I'm so ashamed. I'm embarrassed of saying that. I just don't have the time. Like I said, I work too much. So when I have a moment off, I don't necessarily want to dance. But I'm really thinking uh, of going back uh, to ballet class. But just for me, you know, just to get well. I don't think I'm in shape anymore, so I want to get back in shape. Um, I love ballet. I started with ballet. I think people don't realize how hard it is. It's the most hard discipline I've ever seen in my life. Like, I will never understand why football people get millions, millions running after a fucking ball and dancers don't get half or a quarter of what football people get paid. I will never understand. That is just something I can't understand. Yeah. I started my Instagram account, right? Like anybody else when, I don't know what it was, like 2014 or 13. So it wasn't that big of a deal, you know, it was just Instagram, it was just to take pictures. There were no videos yet. It wasn't a platform that could make you uh, work. You wouldn't get money out of it, you know, back in the days. So I started having my Instagram account like anybody else, you know, like, bitch, just let me take my pictures and have my Instagram account with my friends, live my life, because I am a person, too, you know. So that's how it started. And then, you know, I played the game, I put my videos when they started doing videos, and then it became, I became very popular, so I was like, oh, okay. So then I put, you know, I try to do a mix of both. I try to put my work but I also want to keep being alive and have a personal life and, and also use it as what it should be to begin with, just a fun, you know, way to put your memories, your thing. So I don't want to lose that. I don't want my page to just be my dance because guess what? I'm not just a dancer. I'm not. And I think it's fucking sad if you are just a dancer and if the dance is your life and you have nothing else. No, bitch, I have a life. So I use my Instagram personally too. And I share that and also because I'm not afraid of sharing that. I don't try to force it. Uh, I just, I'm actually just being me and people are just following and watching. That's their problem. If you want to follow me, good, you're welcome. But I'm just going to keep doing what I do and that's pretty much it. I don't really, like I, what I'm saying is I don't really do a post thinking about what people, is it okay to post it? I just do what the fuck I want. I post what I want. And if you like it, good, thank you. 
If she think I'm a, an example, good. If she don't like it, good. If she don't think I'm an example, good. Whatever, I don't give a fuck what people think. I mean, most of the time, because sometimes I do read the comments and sometimes it gets to me because I'm human. So sometimes I do get hurt in what I read and sometimes I do get mad and sometimes I do answer those bitches. <laughs> and, and sometimes I do want to fucking kill everyone. And, 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 uh, and sometimes I'm, I, I ignore. I've learned with the years to ignore more and more. I wasn't always like that, okay? So that's the personal thing. Now, let me just finish with that. The last thing about social media, I love it and I absolutely hate it. And now we go back to why I scream at the students in class. I am lucky enough to, uh, I started dancing when I was 15 years old and I started working when I was 15 years old. There were no internet. I mean, there were internet, but there were no YouTube. There were no Instagram yet. When I started dancing in France, where I come from, when I started my dancing career, professional, I was paid, I lived on my money, so it's professional. I went to auditions like other dancers and I was chosen or not, depending on if I was good or not good. And I loved that time when you had to be good to get picked. It didn't matter who you were on social media. It didn't matter how many followers you had. Nothing of that shit mattered. You only had to be good, trained. That's it. I love that time and I miss that time. It's the same with music. If you think about it, it was so much better before. Come on, let's be real. People then had to fucking sing. Aretha Franklin, Barbra Streisand, Dusty Springfield, Prince. They had to fucking sing, voice, lyrics, everything. Now, if you have three million or four million followers on Instagram, you can drop, um, uh, you can call yourself, you can drop a song and call yourself a singer. And your lyrics will be shit, but people will still buy it. Because that's just how dumb people are today. People don't know the difference from good and bad. So I have a huge problem with that. So I hate social media for all that it's done to kill most of the art. I hate that because people are too, are too, they're craving social media fame so bad that they are willing on doing anything to just be viral. And that's not what happened with me. I'm popular on social media, but not because it was a goal, you know what I mean? It was never like my goal to be a star on social media, no. My goal was to be a respected dance instructor choreographer. And I worked with Cirque du Soleil, with Celine Dion, with Mariah Carey, with legends. And that's all I care for, you know what I mean? And people nowadays just want to be social media famous. They will ask, they will, and even choreographer, they will teach to the songs that are popular in hopes that the artist will see it and will share it. That's why they pick this, those songs. So even dance choreographers or teachers don't even teach to what they want. They teach to what they think is gonna work, is gonna be viral. It's all a fucking, I have no energy for that and I think it's horrible and horrifying. I like to educate my kids with good music and good, you know what I mean? So I hate social media for all of that and I hate when dancers come to class with their only thing in head is to record themselves. That will drive me crazy. It will literally drive me crazy. Like, I will scream at you. I will, I will. Like, put your phone down, bitch. Train, you look horrible. Film you, film yourself once you look okay, you know. So yeah.